All right, morning, 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 morning. Um, today is pop. One second, I'm gonna do that again. Today is take two. Today is August 11th, um, ish. Yeah, it's the 11th. I don't know why I would say ish. It's actually August 11th. Magpie said so. Um, so we got hammered by some rain again last night. This Michigan weather. Y'all keep telling me, oh, get ready for the Michigan weather. We're now significantly here that just random stuff pops up. Like, no forecasted rain, and then just hammered by rain from 11 p.m. onwards. And, like, the kind of precursor to these storms is just whipping wind and just lightning, lightning, uh, best way I can say it, lightning showers, not rain showers, lightning showers like it's the i don't know comparatively to other storm systems in other parts of the country there's not as much like light show going on but here this definitely tells you that the rain's coming so yeah got hit by that said there might be some rain today even though our forecast earlier was no rain for a week i digress we're gonna walk places um gonna shoot for that 33 mark today and I think that gets us either out of the Manistee or like very close to, which is sad. But yeah, it puts us right at the edge. Oh, uh, Magpie says it puts us at the edge. I'm gonna withhold the joke because it's too early for that, and it's too early in the morning for that joke, as well as it's too early in the video for you guys to start hearing the Constantine innuendos. Constantine, yeah. Ron. Oh, baby, that's mean. I want to do jokes with that. <laughs> you know I wanted to do jokes with that. All right. So, we go. Morning, morning. So, there's just... Somebody set it up really well. But it's completely empty. Yeah. So, there's just a Coleman tent. We're about a mile from the Udell Trailhead. And it's completely empty. Not even like a sleeping bag in there. No, and it's like unzipped. So I don't know if somebody just set that up so they don't have to keep carrying stuff back into here or what, but. Just leaving the door open so it gets ventilation, maybe? Super weird. That is a bit weird. Um, but we're both pushing to the Udell trailhead because we're hoping, hoping it has a privy, maybe even a double privy, because Magpie was talking about how. She got hit by that morning umph quicker and I was playing with her and joking around because she said it must have been the coffee and I don't really drink coffee on trail anymore but this morning <clears throat> I asked Magpie for a little bit of that powdered uh, lovey goodness but I was joking with her and teasing her about having to run to the bathroom and then I took a sip of the coffee, well two sips thinking, oh, we're a mile and a half out. By the time we get there, it will start kicking in. Kicked in instantaneously. And now we're on the same struggle bus, both. I should have warned you that it is very strong instant espresso. It's not just regular coffee. It is very strong coffee. So we're both on the struggle bus with thumbs in places to hold parts of ourselves in. I'm gonna try to- for yourself. I just got an iron butt. Okay, she says she has an iron butt. My thumbs are in places. But, whew, yeah, uh, you reap what you sow, right? If you start teasing your partner about having to go to the bathroom and then you drink said coffee that caused it in the first instance, you more likely than not will suffer. Man, I'm having a hard time putting together words today. Yeah, your sentences are all over the place. Yeah, they are. Ten. Ten, yay. Thank God the trail doesn't go this way. That's straight up creepy. Um, you can see it from trail though. Magpie's standing on the trail. What I do for y'all, the amount of stuff that's trying to leave my body right now while I'm trying to film is impressive to say the least. But yeah, imagine coming by that in the dark, Magpie said. Creepy, creepy, creepy. I would, everything that I'm trying to hold back right now would in fact not be held in anymore. I don't know if you caught my drift. I hope you did. All right, trail, you have caught me. I was so close. I was so 
close. Oh no, I just couldn't take the chance. If it wasn't here, stuff was gonna come out whether I wanted it to or not. But the Udell Trailhead does have a privy. I was so close. Baby, I almost made it. I was like literally 0 0.01 away. Huh. Signage though, so, yeah. yeah, baby. I was so close, yeah, yeah. But I asked if it was a double one because I know you needed to go too. If if it wasn't open right when I got there, it would have been bad. I let you go. Oh, baby, I couldn't hear what you yelled back. So, oh, all right, trail, you got one Constantine zero for the day. They also got water here, yeah. I got a dent. All right, as you can see, the water is a gooshin. This is also at the Udell Trailhead. Um, they have a lot of signs for it. It is crystal clear. Super cold. Super cold. It's that aquifer. Do it. It's that type of aquifer water. You got enough, baby? Yeah. Okay. Spring water. Spring life. Get it while the getting's good. All right, only the important questions on this channel. And in this segment, we decided to tune in for Ask a Hiker. And here, on this question, we will, well, ask it. Wow, words are hard today. Magpie. Yeah? How was your poop? A plus. Okay, not as graphic as we expected from a hi fellow hiker, but she said it was A plus. I thought we were going to get into the consistency. A plus, a plus pretty poop. Okay, she said A plus pretty poop. I thought we were going to describe the color, the consistency. Well, you can't when it's a privy poop because it just disappears down the hole. Oh, that is sad. That is the sad part about the privy poop. You don't get to know what it actually you is. It. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a uh, tune in for your weekly segment. I guess it would be daily segment of Ask a Hiker. Um, the privy poop was a okay, she said. And thanks for asking. My ground poop was okay too. Uh-huh. You can still ask. My poop was good, thank you. Okay. Oh, you want me to give more detail? Oh, baby, I could go into some serious detail. Well, so the beginning part was like a plug. No, baby, we don't need that much detail. Okay. <laughs> Yep, well, it's only like a mile or two road walk. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. All right, we find ourselves on a teeny tiny road walk. Um, it's, I think this is called Huff Road, but kind of just does a little loopage and should put us back on single track shortly. The We're, Ministry has like a bunch of patches of private property right in the middle of it that you yeah. have to get across. Yep. So that's why we have all these like little like one mile road walks. I don't know. Out of all the Manistee we've walked, I would say maybe five miles have been on road. Not even. I would yeah. say maybe three miles. It's very small, so I'm a I can get down with it. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's just like a half mile here and there just to get you past private property. Yeah. I can get down with it. So that's a very sad road. If you read that sign, it never gets plowed. Baby? I can't hear you. Did you hear my joke? No. You want me to say it again so these people can hear it again too? No. Baby, I can say it again. I'm good, I know what you said. You did hear what I said. No, but I know what you would have said. Okay, off camera I'm gonna see if she actually does know what I said. Baby, don't go too fast. Why? Speed limit 10. <laughs> Is it like dispersed camping? Yeah. Have a North Country Trail campsite here. With a privy. Campsite and there's a water cache and a hearth. There is a water cache and a hearth. I campsite wish we would have known this was the, here. It's not on my map. It's not on my map either. They need to add this to the official maps. Maybe they want it just to be a surprise. There's a log book. And arriving on foot. That's cool. Yeah, so they're like, we don't want people just camping here for fun. Yeah. That's nice 
That is very sweet. Um, I don't know, a few miles from Udell. Uh, we're at like mile 807. Well, I don't want to tell them exactly. Come find it. It's on Cedar Creek Road. Uh oh, baby. Okay, well, you can cut that part. So somehow, we have found Michigan Avenue in Michigan, NCT, and a baby. There's a blue blaze on this tree right across, but for some reason Magpie's not choosing to go into that woods because there's no trail. Um, I thought this was the end of the road walk, but nope, there's another blue blaze. So I guess we continue a little bit farther down until we find single track. Okay, I thought that was cool. Michigan Avenue in Michigan. All right, we found the single track. Kind of just doesn't really announce itself, but look for three blazes. I mean, it's pretty, pretty evident where it is. But yeah, found ourselves a single track. Look at that. It's a good little hill. Goes straight down to the river. All right, lunchtime. It's an early lunch, but it's a lunch nonetheless. It's like 11 and 10. Once you come down and about across the river, the trail goes that way, there's this turnout that, it was really sunny when we got here, five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. But as we've been here, clouds pushed over. Clouds have pushed overhead, but <laughs> it got, I mean, it was blue skies when we got here. It was blue skies when we got here. So we're still gonna use it as lunch. Hopefully the wind or whatever have you will dry out this stuff enough. Um, have drying out the drawers, drying out the shirt because there's no laundry in Walhalla, drying out the ground sheet, tent fly, and then we're just gonna eat. So yeah, we had sun, but then the sun went away. I'm gonna fix that. All right, early lunch. This would have been the spot to take lunch. Yeah, this is cool. That's, this is what those, um, that pile of wood was about. What pile? The other side of Wikipedia Bridge. What pile of wood? You know that, like, wood wall? No. The one that you were like, I wonder what that wood wall is about? Oh, yeah. It's the other side of this. You just have a printout of Google Maps? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean... Uh -oh. This would have been a good lunch spot. All right, walk a little further past the bridge. It's you can nicer. You can still dry out stuff up top here, too. I feel like it's not raining, which it's about to. Wow, look at all the stickers. Pro-union people, which, good job, guys. Hey, baby. So I was a little bit skeptical about today because um, we're getting towards the tail end of the Potoski. Well, not Potoski. Wow. My mind's in a million directions. We're getting towards the tail end of the Manistee Forest part. And um, what it looked like was it hugged the river a lot today. And that had me a little worried with um, being down by there and skeeters and whatnot. Mosqu I'm referencing mosquitoes. But as you can see, it's done a fantastic job of like putting us up on a little bit of a ridge or plateau and the river's all the way down there. So still beautiful. You still get the river views, but you also don't get the stagnant standing water that you sometimes get when walking right next to a river you get wind breeze some good trail stepping good trail living awesome it's really nice it's not even like the stairs are needed it's just a thought that counts like by the time 
you walk up them. I mean, by the time you look at them, you're up them. But um, it's the thought that counts. Shows how much dedication and passion go into uh, maintaining these these parts of the trail. Beautiful too. Kind of little ridge run. It's like a giant playground up here. It's awesome. Um, there's like different tiers of the tabletops. So it seems like it tries to keep us at the highest one, but then that's not gonna be a good shot. There's different tiers. So like we're at the highest tabletop right now in relation to being right next to the river. And then we sometimes go down to the mid one, sometimes go down to the low one. It's just a giant playground. Um, absolutely loving it. This is some of the best hiking. I love the Manistee Forest, but these kind of ups and downs along the riverbank. There you go. That's not going to show it well either. That just shows steepness. But it puts you in these little kind of pockets of, yeah, different flat tabletops, which is really cool. Um, I don't know. I, I like the feeling of having to drop off on one side of me. Just brings me back to mountains, I guess, even if it's not far, so beautiful playground switchbacks well I'll be huh? yeah it's still like really close and sweaty but it is very humid This is a bayou, baby. And the water's really clear. Something's filtering it. I would drink the bayou water. Yeah. Down by... Oh, there's a black fly. Yeah. Yep, just landed on my finger. Down by the bayou. Huh. Not what I pictured of when I pictured a bayou. Pretty. Aww. I uh, know, that is pretty cool. A little bit of a tunnel action. Catch that barrel, brah. Mm -hmm. So we could just take a shortcut if we swam upriver. Oh, watch where you're filming, Constantine. If we swam upriver, then cut across to there. Big shortcut. As you know. Oh, I know. As you know, with our tracker, we are taking all of the river shortcuts. We swim every single one. Disclaimer, as you can tell, I'm being super sarcastic. A lot of jokes. We do not take shortcuts. And and we also don't swim rivers. We're not on the GDT, folks. The GDT, we swam rivers. I'm here to swim rivers and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum.
All right, we are just kicking it. Um, no really descript area besides that is, wow, that's a close up of my face. That is saw dust hole camping. We just climbed back up to one of these plateaus. Pretty good breezage up here. So, good spot to break. Mm -hmm. um, yonder that way is about 18 miles where we're shooting for camp. So, not yet 2 o'clock, like 1.50. So, should be able to get there right at 8. What I do want to point out is we have once again... Wow, this is terrible camera footage. Um, I have the screen flipped, so this is why so bad i'm really bad at this but here we go so the tracker we should be at like 14 and a half right now but with the storm above us and i don't know what it is it's saying 13.6 i know that's all backwards to y'all but right now it's missing a full mile on it and it's because of this i'll show you Riveting. I know. It has skips. I don't know how you see that. Instead of doing that 10 minute in increvals, it. yeah. it's skipping at like 20 minutes and 30 minutes. So instead of like doing all the wiggles, it's doing like straight shots. Can't really help it, so whatever. Um, it's bother it bothers me more than it probably bothers you. But yeah, just sitting here. Going to get hiking here in a second. Yeah. Fine places. Hi. What are you doing? What are you trying to do? I was doing the thumb underneath the chin. Okay. Okay. All right. So after Stone, um, that place we were sitting at a break, um, the next mile or so, we're still on the plateau. And then you climb a little bit more to the next plateau. Then you're on this trail, which surprisingly, out of all of Manistee so far, this is the most overgrown we've hit. And it's not bad. Um, just wanted to point it out. It's uh, definitely some wind and storm damage that's pushing stuff into the trail. But yeah, it's still beautiful. I miss my ridge by the river, but I can, uh, I can dig this too. The seed pod's got me. Baby, you got gooshed. Yeah, the plant is doing a really good job of spreading wow. seed pods. Wow, that plant does spread its seed very well. Yep, they're everywhere. Huh. Fortunately, they're not like that sticky to remove. They're just like Velcro. We should take a forest class. <laughs> yeah, we should know what these are. Oh, I was, I was thinking of it more on how to spread, spread the seed, learn from the plants. Alright, so it's 3 o'clock, um, almost 3 o'clock on the dot, I think it's like 2.59, and wow, um, <clears throat> it's August 11th, and we're pretty north in Michigan, we're pretty north in the U.S., um, let alone Michigan, like, where we are, if you drew a straight line across, I don't know, it's pretty north, um, so, <laughs> I was trying to think of where it would come out to. I think it would come out to somewhere in Washington State. I might be wrong, who knows. But what I'm trying to say is we're pretty far north and I am absolutely drenched in sweat right now. It is, it's not so much just like the heat from the sun baking us, but it is just so humid that you're just dripping sweat moving. So I think it's like 80s today or 85 or somewhere in there. And again, it's not that heat that is like the sun on your face, you feel like you're burning. It's the heat that is just so humid, it's pushing out. And why I'm saying that is, I don't know, for me, I just didn't assume that would happen in August in Michigan. I've never been up to Michigan in this time, so I didn't know what to expect. And it's not, again, these are logs of 
our daily experiences. So it's not good, it's not bad. Just wanted to tell you I'm wet. I'm wet in humidity, I'm moist. I'm very, very moist. So I thought I should let you all know that because who doesn't wanna play around in the forest all moist? Oh, I'm soggy like a frog. You touch my skin anywhere, it's just so, so moist. Whew, okay, you're welcome. All right, so we find ourselves at a junction. That is not the NCT. NCT continues this way, as you can see by this sign. Um, these plateaus, you're gonna do some climbing today. Um, one of the first days that we're doing like consistent ups and downs, and when I say ups and downs, it's not anything crazy like a mountain, but it's up and it's down. And it's up and it's down. Hi. Hello. You look hot. It's sweaty. Yeah. Very, very shortly after that river trail sign, there is this that looks like a baller campsite. You are the tallest thing around. Definitely don't take your greatest storm, but like the closest weather, the closest spot. Yeah, closest water I could remember is a few miles back. It's like at least six miles back. When we cross the, what was it the called? Yeah, it was the, ooh, something swamp. The bayou? The bayou. Yeah. That was the closest water I can remember, so. At least six miles ago, probably more like eight miles. Yeah, or well, you could do a quick jaunt down to the river, but it's going to be steep. That's a cliff, dude. Well, you don't go down there, down by the river trail. The one that we just passed. All right, so a little bit after that high point um, slash the junction of that river trail, there's a kind of designated campsite. But again, it's completely up to you. The amount of campsites or even potentials for campsites that we've passed today, I can't even count. Um, study your maps. Um, you can get up top and find some good camping. If you want to camp down by the river, you can find good camping. There's just so much. Um, it would be impossible to point out every single de designated one. You're in a national forest, so leave no trace camping applies. Um, yeah, pick and choose your campsite. There's just so much. But if you're want, wanting one that's right on trail, that is a good one. So there's really no sign to this one but you can see it from trail. And again, another astounding campsite. This one, even better than that last top. Um, I'd say it's a few miles from there, three or four miles. Absolutely astounding. This campsite is sweet. Except for the Widowmakers. Yeah, these two are Widowmakers. Um, but besides that fact, wow. This section has some Insane camping. Insane camping. Yeah. You're gonna have to, you have to haul water. Yeah, you're gonna have to haul your water or bushwhack far to the river or look in some of these gullies and hope. Um, I'll just carry water. For eastbound NCTers, it's gonna be easier if you wanna come out of Messick and come up to this plateau and camp. Oh, we're about three miles away from water right now. Yeah. Going like going yeah, westbound. Yeah, but for westbounders, if you wanted to camp before we drop down out of these plateaus onto the big lake, um, you're going to have to haul water in a little more. But it is astounding. Wow. You can eat up here, no bugs. Um, beautiful. It's awesome. I would, be, I would love to camp up here during stick season. Yeah, that'd be great. When there's no leaves on the trees, you can just see for ages probably. Uh-oh. Oh, come on. It was a completely serious video clip. And then somehow the camera malfunctioned. And oh, it's just, I thought you were about to say it didn't record. And it's just stuck on Zoom right now. It was a great clip. I was filming all the good campsites, giving you all the information. And it just got stuck on Zoom, baby. Gee, it's a good thing you can edit these. 
Ah, I can't get it off Zoom. What do I do? Should I just throw it off a cliff? I don't know, babe. Okay. Man, I almost got it just a complete serious video clip. But the phone just decides to play with me. So we dropped down into this little ravine and there's a lot of fresh water. I like these. I've actually never seen these on other trails. Um, I've never seen them utilized out on the trail system. So they're like a really thick plastic. So I think you can fill up the water even more. But they're right at the trailhead and there's no name. There's nothing for NCT hikers. So I don't know. So we didn't grab any of the agua. Might be for somebody in a race or somebody that caches it for their hike. But yeah, really cool tablelands. Um, really enjoying this type of hiking. Really beautiful through here. All right, I don't know if this is the top top, but it feels like the top out of Sweets Ravine. Um, yeah, you're gonna do some climbing today from before you Dell Trailhead to where we are now. These little tabletops, when you're on top of them, um, you're kind of contouring around, but when you have to connect in between them, you're going to do some climbing. feels awesome. So good. So I'm going to coincide this with a happy video and also a frustration video. So let's see if I can do this while walking. Um, the GPS has been making me irate. So set for 10 minute pings. You want to see what it's been doing? It has been... It's like skipped 40 minutes now. Skipped 20 minutes there. Um, I don't know why it does this sometimes. Skipped like 15 there. So... This really bothers you, doesn't it? Oh, it frustrates me so much because this is supposed to be what grabs the accurate... accurate most accurate mile measurement, but instead we have to base it off of paper maps instead of electronic signal. So that makes me feel all types of ways. Um, so yeah, you're gonna hear my rant on that. I don't know what does it. It's done it a few times when we've been on trail and sometimes it's stormy, sometimes it's ravine-y. Um, and then sometimes it just glitches straight out. Like all of a sudden, once it does it one time during the day, the rest of the day is just wacky. So if it's just going, doesn't have a glitch, it's good. But as soon as it does it once during the day, it does it at least four to five times. The entire day is thrown off, so. Well, maybe it's like poor satellite coverage or like sunspots, because those can make satellite connections Yeah, but there's no direct reason why. But yeah, even having trouble connecting to satellites, it should collect the data from a 10 minute interval because sometimes it will send all six pings out at once, but it doesn't even collect the data from a 10 minute interval. Yeah, because it relies on satellites to tell it what time it is. No. Oh. It doesn't have an internal clock. It needs to double check it against the satellite. That's why it's not working. I got feelings. Love the hiking, hate the tracker. So for you on your screen, you're not going to be able to see it great. But if you're looking in between these trees and you see that blue line, um, that blue line right here, if you follow that, that's another ridge line across the valley from us. And we, don't, we haven't gotten that a whole lot on the NCT. Um, and with both of us having hiked all the other trails, that feels like peace. That feels comfortable that feels um home that, that really feels like our home being able to walk along a ridge line and see even if it's not a big mountain range over there or even hills seeing that semblance of a ridge line like a mimic 
um, it gives you that same feeling. Um, there's a special place in the heart when you see another ridge line, when you're on a, another one. I don't think I'm describing it good, but for those of you who know, you know what I'm trying to say, that, yeah, hikers, especially with how varied this NCT is and how flat in locations and not mountainous per se um, is, sites like that are sometimes rare. Um, so we really got to soak them in and really appreciate them for what they are. And I'm using the headphones right now. Um, to talk to y'all and I was listening to a song before I saw that but I'm going to take them off I'm going to stop talking to y'all because I want to enjoy that um, it has a special special feeling alright so this is what creek is it called I think I'm going to grab water here this is called Eddington Creek and it is the first usable water source we have seen since that meadow that I filmed. It has a name. I'm blanking bayou. on it. Some bayou. Sawdust, sawdust hole bayou. Yeah, before sawdust hole. Um, I think that water with lake. Yeah, this looks like immaculate water. I was going to just get lake water for camp, but this is... I was looking at the map system. I mean, it's, not, done... it's not a river. It's... It's a spring from coming up there somewhere. We've done 29 miles and this is what I have left. Yeah, it's good agua. So for eastbounders on the NCT, before you get to those ridge lines, this is your last spot to fill up um, and it's excellent. So I would not camp down here though. No, I would get up to the ridge There's lines. like some places where it looks like people have camped around here. There yeah. are definitely better spots like right up there. Get the climb out of the way too. Yeah, yeah for us westbound, we came down from up here. If you go that way a little bit, there's more camping down by the creek, but keep climbing. I, I would go up top. It's beautiful. Let's go get some ogs. I, mean, I need yeah. to check my email at some point and see if yeah. Big Agnes actually wants me to mail them back the pad or if they're like, oh, we trust you, just throw it out. I bet they do. Y'all, check this out. This is, look at that condensation of how cold that water is. Look at that. Look how crystal clear ice cold that is. That's like sticking your hand in a glacial stream. Um, it's fresh out of the fridge. Yeah, it's fresh out of the fridge, as Magpie just said. So she's filtering. Well, it's called. Out of an of caution, but like, yeah, it's called. I, you don't need to. This is really nice spring water. No, this is coming straight from a spring. Um, or at least the headwaters of the creek are right up there because it is ice, ice cold. You saw that condensation. That was beautiful. Like it's hurting my hands to filter it because it's so cold. Yeah. Oh, so good. All right. So it's about 6.53. That's exactly 6.53. It's exactly 6.53 p.m. I got the hiccups on August 11th. And it's sad. We only have about a mile left of the Manistee National Forest. And oh boy, what a section. Um... I don't know how many miles exactly we did. About five 30 plus mile days. So over 150 or somewhere close to that. According to a sign I saw yesterday, it's 167. 167 sounds super right. Um, so 167 miles through the Manistee. And wow. Um, by far one of the favorite sections so far on the NCT. Um, the entire North Country Trail. Just immaculate trail system. Like really good routing um just really well taken care of a lot of passion and then the places you go through super beautiful too um a lot of different types of environments kind of hodgepodge together in, into themselves yeah it's like a greatest hits it's like i just wanted to take you through like everything that the manistee has to offer while yeah. also not taking you too far out of your way it was really really well done yeah they have swamps they got swamps, they got marshes, they've got oak savanna turkey habitat. They've got like a couple different types of marsh. There's riverside walk. There's a little bit of um, like contouring on tablelands. There's those cool old sand dune things. It's great. There's lots of different stuff to like in here. Every day is different. There is. I have no idea what that image will actually turn out to be. I just put the camera over my head and filmed her. Um, but yeah, as she said, just awesome stuff. I don't know how we got so lucky with the bugs. 
Um, I thought that was going to be a giant factor, but not even a factor. I mean, every so often they would come out, but rarely. Just all around. What a, what a part of the trail system. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So, got about a mile left, and we're going to sadly say goodbye to the Manatee. What is it lately with us finding these little bandits? These little sketchy bandits. There's another one in the other tree. Oh, you're a little chunky. You're trying to hide your... Oh, don't be coming down. Uh-oh. Okay, you keep... Running away. Yeah, I thought it was coming down to say hi. There's another one in another tree. Those little chonkies. There it is. Oh, look, there's another one. So somebody was I'm trying... Here. I'm not going to film you. So somebody was trying to watch TV out here. Um, right before the end of the National Forest... They tried to plug it in. It looks like it didn't work. Um, I make jokes, but that's super nasty. Don't ditch TVs in national forests. Not cool. Uh, alas, we found, our, found find ourselves at the end of the Manistee National Forest. It is sad, sad. Sad, 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 sad. Um, but you know what they say, right, folks? It is better... To have loved and lost, and to have never loved at all. And alas, that is where we find ourselves. The end of the manistee? And the loss of love, baby. No, you still love me. I still love you, baby. But I don't, but I lost the love of the manistee. Well, it is sad. It still loves us, it's just not there yet. Look for the guardrail. And that's where you enter trail back. That's interesting. I think it's to keep uh, ATVs out. Yeah, makes sense. But now, we just pitter-patter around this lake. Um, yeah, walk with me, talk with me. This is going to be a long video today, but I'm sorry, y'all. You're just going to have to accept that. There was a lot that went on today. A lot of emotions, a lot of awesome trail. Um, and the trail keeps continuing to be awesome. We are going to camp on a lake tonight, baby. That's so cool. Um, and we're going to actually get to camp around 8 that we'll actually be able to enjoy it a little bit is even better wow oh yeah oh yeah baby that's what i'm talking about lake living baby lake living yeah. all right we're gonna do a few more miles That's a good bench. That's a, good bench. That's a quality bench. Y'all ready to see a lake with a bright sun? It's gonna hurt my eyes. Doesn't hurt your eyes. Hurt my eyes doing that type of filming. It's bright. No camping. No camping. All right, so just signed this trail log along this little lake. Um, a lot of people had signed this, so Pretty cool. They got a lot of info. Oh, I wanted to film what they signed. Oh, okay. Let me find. Sorry. I'm just ready to go. I know. There we go. Okay. So, 811, NCT through hike, 2555. And P.S. My nipples are sweaty. Yes, they are. Thank you for letting me know, Magpie. You said that. That's not my fault. Oh, was that my handwriting? Yes, yeah, so that's your handwriting. All right, a lot of people signed the log, as you saw. Um, so we're going to go see where we're going to get. Beautiful bridge. Beautiful lake. A lot of good good. Wow, the breeze through here is pretty, pretty nice right now, too. go about it so this is the northern exposure camping area so and where it's located on the map is slightly wrong yeah it's located here we're actually like here 
Okay. But um, I think the campground is quite big. Okay. So what I was going to say is this is camping on Gaia as well, Northern Exposure Trailhead, but I don't think that actually is. And then this is camping too, and all of those are actually not free campsites. They're all pay campsites. So this is $10, and these are $6. Yeah, so we're going to see if we can actually just do it here. It's like 8 o'clock. Um, if we can't, we're going to keep going. But they're numbered beginning. The sites are located along the northern edge. You may camp at the main campground. Walk a 10 minute walk east from the entrance. Oh, proceed yeah, to so park this is office. A huge campground. That's why the icon is oh. put elsewhere. So this is just the to the goddamn lot. All right, so we found camp. Um, that number is off. We're closer to 34. I'm gonna check in with Magpie. I gotta set up the camp because. There's a lot of wind and a lot of rain that might be coming in, but that number is wrong. That number is probably wrong. Yeah, we that number is like probably wrong. Miles. Yeah, that number is probably wrong. That number is probably wrong. It gets thrown out of whack when it doesn't grab stuff. So I think we've done 34 miles. It's um, very close to 34, probably 33.6. Yeah, so see, it's past 10 mile increments, 10 minute increments. So I'm gonna stop doing this and set up camp because we gotta try to beat this rain, but overall, awesome day. Tracking stop, 34 miles. We'll take that right outside of uh, Mesic. Hey, yeah, Mesic, it's pronounced. Yeah, you are cute. <laughs>